ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಾಂಧಸ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲಿತನ್ ಏನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಟಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ ಇತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ವೆರಿ ಮಿಸ್ಟಿಕಲಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ಲಿ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಯಾನ್ ಫ್ರಾನ್ಸಿಸ್ಕೋ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ಕಾನ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಡೇ ಆಫ್ ಗೌರ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಿಮಾ ಇನ್ ದ ಇಯರ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ದ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಲೇಷನ್ ಸೆರೆಮನಿ Prabhupada said in India an installation ceremony is a long ritual lasting over many days and very very qualified brahmanas chanting different mantras and having an elaborate procedure for installation but here in San Francisco Srila Prabhupada created a very simple form of installation of jagannath he was doing kirtan and he had a plate and had a candle lit and then he told devotees should come one by one and offer the lamp in circles to jagannath so you can imagine Srila Prabhupada was gradually introducing Arati but to these young American followers who are totally unfamiliar with any of these practices. And then Swamiji said, when you do this offering of the lamp to Jagannath and then when you become a little tired, you can hand over the plate to another devotee and then another person would come another devotee would come and offer like this and as long as the kirtan is going on this kind of an offering should be going on so this was the procedure that prabhupada followed and he went back to his dais on the dais on the asan and he was chanting hari krishna and all the devotees who were assembled there were also chanting and all day they had fasted Prabhupada had told them to fast all day till moon rise till evening and so they were all fasting and then they would all come one after another after uh, offer the arati to jagannath and then after about 45 minutes or so of kirtan and offering lamp to jagannath then prabhupada said now you must feel the heat of the flame and touch it to your head so he was gradually telling them how an arati should be respected and then one devotee should go around to everyone so that everyone can feel the heat of the flame and touch their head so one devotee followed that prabhupada demonstrated that and another devotee went around and then prabhupada also spoke for a while and then there was a feast 
and the feast was served and it was offered to Jagannath, Baladev Subhadra and the feast was served. So like this, Prabhupada in his, in, instituted a very simple form of deity worship, deity installation and this was the first deity formally installed like this. Of course, a few weeks before, uh, someone gifted a blue color Krishna, just about two feet high, and uh, a very nice young boy, child Krishna, who had his one hand on his hip, and he was very nice. And then this deity you might have seen in the black and white pictures of those days. And Prabhupada called him Kartama Shai. And so this deity was also on the altar and uh, up on the redwood uh, pillars and the altar uh, Shamsundar had made. And the deities were up there at a considerable height. So, uh, and it was a few days after that, somehow someone got an idea. They were going and doing the kirtan every now and then, and especially on Sundays, and uh, in a nearby Golden Gate Park, in a place called Hippie Hill, where a large number of people would gather. And someone got an idea that they should take Jagannath. And they took carry Jagannath all the way to the park, and they put him on the grass, and they started doing kirtan. And Swamiji came to know about it. He came rushing. He came to the temple hall and saw only Baladev, Subhadra are there. Jagannath is in his place. It's empty. And then the devotees, actually one devotee had come to Swamiji and told, Swamiji, we have taken Jagannath to the park and large number of people are coming. Swamiji was shocked. He came down from his apartment and he saw the temple hall. The altar was without Jagannath. And he also rushed to the park and he saw the devotees were there chanting, singing, dancing. And he saw Jagannath on the grass. He paid his obeisance and he sat there and continued singing. And that's when he said that after the Kirtan, they brought Jagannath back to the temple and he was not so happy. And he said, the deity should not be taken like that. If anybody wants to have darshan, they should come to the temple. And however, he said, the deity goes out of the temple on a special day uh, to give darshan to everyone. That is only once in a year. And it is on a special date. And then that's how he talked about the Ratha Yatra and introduced. And he said that we should, we should have a Ratha. And he gave some ideas and the devotees were running around making uh, the Ratha. So all of these kind of things were happening and the devotees, young devotees who were coming and meeting him, the, especially the inner circle of devotees and uh, boys and girls, they would come together and some of them were living together, but they were not married. Almost every week Prabhupada was having a marriage ceremony and uh, initiation. So many devotees got initiated. Many devotees got married and they would do different services that Prabhupada had created in the temple, cooking, getting some food and vegetables and groceries on donation, cooking and serving. The devotees' lives were transforming. Their lives revolved around Swamiji and doing different things that he wanted them to do. And Prabhupada created a simple system of, uh, of classes and kirtans early in the morning and uh, in the evening. And uh, he was always available. People would come up to him, walk up to the apartment, and he was there patiently speaking to them, answering questions. Some of them would come drugged, but Swamiji made no distinction and he was very loving, very caring. Some of them came with a challenging attitude. Some of them came with a, a, a submissive attitude. 
Some of them were confused. Some of them were pained and had a lot of problems in their life. Swamiji would hear them and speak to them the transcendental message of Krishna consciousness. Once a, a drugged and he had read something about some Indian philosophy and, and uh, that one can become God. And so one day he came up to Swamiji and he said, I'm actually higher than you. So Prabhupada sat behind his desk and he was patiently hearing. And then he said, I am higher than you. I am God. So Swamiji folded his hands, bowed, said, please accept my obeisance, God, and now you may leave. So like this, Prabhupada had all kinds of visitors and Prabhupada was gradually introducing different aspects of Krishna consciousness. And in his talks, there would be, Prabhupada would talk about Narada Muni and gradually he was introducing the different characters and how Narada Muni would travel all over the universe, spreading Krishna consciousness, chanting Krishna's glories, chanting Krishna's name, chanting Hare Krishna. So devotees were hearing and uh, all of these kind of things. And one day, Prabhupada gave a class. And uh, after the class, he looked around and asked for questions. Prabhupada would be very happy if someone had a question and because that would lead to more discussion of Krishna conscious philosophy. And he looked around and on that particular day, no one had a question. And so Govinda Dasi, a young American girl who had just got initiated and got married, she thought that she had a question and she, was, she thought it was a good opportunity for her to ask the question. And so he, she put up her hand and then Swamiji said, yes, you have a question. So she was a little hesitant because her question did not refer to the class that he had given on that particular day. So she said, uh, yes, I have a question, but it's not really about the today's topic. Prabhupada said, okay, nevertheless, you can ask. And then she said, Swamiji, you said that um, Chaitanya, he used to call out, cry for Krishna and jumped into a river. Can you please tell us a little more about that? And Prabhupada was very pleased. He said, very good question. And then he began to explain. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who had come in the mood of Radharani, and his mood was, where is Krishna? When will I see Krishna? And then Prabhupada explained, that this is the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the mood of Param in the Parampara of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he taught. That we are all always feeling separation from Krishna. Krishna is so great. Krishna is so wonderful. But I am such a sinful person. I am so fallen and I am so unqualified. I can't see Krishna. When will I see Krishna? So this kind of a feeling, feeling of separation and wanting to see Krishna and feeling like this unqualified perpetually. And this enriches your Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada kept explaining. Not that now I have seen Krishna over. My business is over. Finished. No, not like that. When will I see Krishna? When I am so fallen. So that was the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and looking for Krishna here, there. He was mad. And when he saw the ocean, he mistook the ocean to be Yamuna river where Krishna would perform his pastimes. So calling out Krishna, where are you Krishna? Krishna, and he jumped into the ocean. So he narrated that Leela. And then Prabhupada said, 
his followers. The next generation of his followers were the six Goswamis, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami. So slowly like this, Prabhupada is introducing all of the different important personalities in our Sampradaya. Rupa and Sanatana, they were also like that. And they wrote many books extensively discussing the philosophy. And then they talked about, and in their advanced stage, they were also feeling that kind of an intense separation. And then Prabhupada said, there's a very nice song about them. And he began to sing. He Radhe Vraja Devi Kachalalite He Nandasu Nokutaha This is how the Goswamis were, were, what were they doing? They were going all around. He Radhe Vraja Devi Ke Where are you? Kutaha, where are you? Lalite, Lalita, another associate of Radharani. Nanda Suna Kutaha, Nanda Suna means Nanda's son, son of Nanda Maharaj. Where are you? Sri Govardhana Kalpa Padapa Tale. So they were searching for Krishna uh, in, the, in the Govardhana hills. And are, is Krishna there? Kalpa Padapa Tale, under the trees in Govardhan. Kalindi Vane Kutaha. In the forest of, on the banks of Kalindi, Yamuna, where is Krishna? This was the feeling that they were having. Goshantaviti Sarvato Rajapure Kedhair Mahavihvalo. So, Goshantaviti, Kutaha, Kutaha, where is Krishna? They were loudly, Goshantaviti, they were calling out. And Kedhair. And they were feeling intense separation. Mahavihvalo. And, and they were feeling such, their minds were so agitated and feeling separation from, from Krishna. They were calling out, they were searching for Krishna. This was the mood of the Goswamis also, following in the footsteps of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Swamiji was describing how even the Goswamis, Rupa and Sanatana, they were feeling such intense separation, looking for Krishna, calling out, Krishna, where are you? Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? And while Swamiji was describing this, he closed his eyes and there was a long silence for about one and a half minutes. All the devotees were still and they were looking at Swamiji and there was a certain devotional intensity in the room. Everybody froze in their seats and Swamiji uttered a short mm. and his eyes were closed. Then after this long one and a half minutes of silence. Swamiji opened his eyes. His eyes were filled with tears, which kept gliding down his face. He reached out for the kartals and he tried to rattle the kartal, but then once again he froze and he closed his eyes for another long minute and all the devotees were transfixed, looking at him, and he uttered another very soft, hmm. and another minute, another minute, for about four minutes of silence. And Prabhupada gathered the kartan and started singing Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya and there were tears coming from his eyes and he continued the Kirtan and slowly building up the temple for about 10 minutes and then he brought the Kirtan to the close left the Kartals there got up from his seat and walked away now Prabhupada gathered the Kartals 
and he started slowly playing. Tears were still flowing down his cheeks and he started singing Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya and the devotees picked up the harmonium, picked up the murdanga and they also get joined in the kirtan and the kirtan went on for about 10 minutes and then he closed the kirtan, put the kartal down and then he got up and went away. So all the devotees were just wondering. They knew Swamiji is here amidst us in Haight-Ashbury. He is amidst us in San Francisco. He is amidst us in America. But he truly doesn't belong to this world. He belongs to the spiritual world. He's also feeling the same feelings of separation that the Goswamis were feeling. He's also experiencing that intense feelings that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was feeling. And although he is amidst us, he is a very, very special person. So this understanding and this realization was among all the devotees. Although Prabhupada was very endearing to them, spending a lot of time with them, cooking for them, and conducting marriages, initiation, giving names. So this is how Srila Prabhupada was very, very uh, endearing. So one day, one of the evenings, there was no scheduled program. So the devotees asked Swamiji, Swamiji, can we go to the beach and do kirtan there? So Prabhupada said, yes, we will go. Americans, they want to go to the beach. They want to have a, some kind of a campfire. And so Prabhupada said, all right. And he was going along with them. And so the devotees got into the car. This was that Krishna car an old car and Prabhupada leaned back because the seat would go back so much and then Shamsundar was driving and a few more devotees got packed into a few more cars and there was a, a convoy of cars and they went to the beach and it was still cold those days this is uh, March end of March around that time and uh, it's still it was cold in the evening and so the devotees gathered and uh, they had brought potatoes and they had brought some corn. They lit up a fire and they had apples. They wrapped the apples in aluminum foil and had uh, jaggery and uh, raisins filled into the apple. And they had potatoes wrapped in aluminum foils. They put all of that in the fire. And then there was a big kirtan and Prabhupada led the kirtan and the devotees were very happy. They were holding their hands, going round and round the fire and Swamiji and on the bank of, on the, on the beach, just that side was the ocean, Pacific Ocean. And the kirtan was going on and it was hardly anybody. There was no one around. And so the devotees did very nice kirtan. And then after the kirtan, they went for a short walk. They came back and then again they sat down. By then they opened up all the foils and they ap applied butter and they opened up the apples, which was also baked now in coal. And uh, all the devotees had and they gave to Swamiji. Swamiji also was eating uh, this uh, prasadam. And uh, then this, there were some leftover and some dogs up here around. And Prabhupada gave away all the leftover prasadam to the, the fortunate dogs who received Mahaprasadam from Prabhupada. And they ate the, the dogs ate. And then they had another kirtan once again. And uh, at that time, one of the devotees, two devotees, had composed a song. And they asked Swamiji, Swamiji, shall, can we sing this song that we have composed? And Swamiji said, yes, please. And uh, they said that we have composed a song on a special song that we want you to hear. And Prabhupada said, it's all right. And then the devotee 
the two of them who had composed the song and they began to sing. <clears throat> Do you know who is the first eternal spaceman of this universe? I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to attempt singing. <clears throat> Do you know who is the first eternal spaceman of this universe? The first to send his wild, wild vibrations to all those cosmic superstitions. For the song he always shouts, sends the planets flipping out. But I'll tell you before you think me loony that I'm talking about Narada Muni singing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Prabhupada heard the song and he laughed. <laughs> he was very happy. As long as there is Hare Krishna mantra, Swamiji will be pleased. <laughs> they had figured out and so they inserted the Hare Krishna mantra in their song. And then Prabhupada said, he encouraged them, he said, very nice. You should continue to compose many more songs like this and make all your countrymen sing these wonderful Krishna conscious songs. So Prabhupada was very, very understanding, accommodating their culture and their language. And Prabhupada encouraged them to glorify Krishna in their own, uh, uh, in their own style. So devotees, had this campfire and the kirtan and Swamiji was very happy and then as it became dark the kirtan ended and as the kirtan ended Swamiji was leading the kirtan he brought the kirtan to a close and then he said Om Jai Om Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa he chanted the Prematvani prayers and then he said all glories to the assembled devotees all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the Pacific Ocean. And devotees said, Hari Bol and laughed. So Prabhupada was light-hearted, endearing, accommodating these young American devotees and their practices in their country and having Kirtan in the midst of all of this. Actually, it is said in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Every place that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited, even if it was for just a day or for a night, or even if it was for a few minutes, that place is a holy place. Wherever the Lord and his pure devotees visit is a holy place. In fact, Srila Prabhupada has blessed and sanctified many, many places all over the world. And it's a wonderful opportunity for devotees to visit all these places on a world tour. Visit these places, visit the park, visit the temples that Prabhupada had started and read and remember these pastimes of pure devotee. Have Kirtan and have a wonderful worldwide, round the world pilgrimage someday. And hope we will arrange this from our temple and take hundreds of devotees all over the world. There were many things happening in uh, Haight Ashbury and places around Haight Ashbury, San Francisco, especially among the counterculture uh, young American boys and girls. So there was one person, his name was uh, Louis and he was a folk singer and uh, he was also strongly influenced by this hippie culture and uh, outside of San Francisco, nearly 60 miles north of San Francisco, he had a a farm, Americans call it ranch, and uh, he had called it Morning Star Ranch, and um, it was a 30 acre ranch, and uh, 
It was open to all hippies who were who wanted to take a break from the cities and uh, it was in the midst of redwood forests very tall trees redwood trees are very tall 200 feet high big big girth and in fact there are they have carved out the girth and a car can pass in and out so because the, the tree was in the, in the middle of the road so that kind of a very very tall trees redwood trees in that forest he had created this uh, a commune and he called it an experimental hippie commune and uh, he was encouraging anyone to can come and live in my commune to live in harmony with nature you must grow vegetables potatoes you must grow your own food as much as possible and it is open to everyone as an act of love and peace and uh, uh, Clothes was optional in the commune, so you understand. And these people freely shared everything, including drugs and sex. So, and they worshipped sun, and they all held hands and sang, and looking at the sun. So these kind of uh, young Americans who were looking for some spirituality but were misguided. So the founder and the owner of this ranch invited Swami to come and perform Kirtan. So it was an unusual situation, Swamiji getting an invitation to this kind of a commune. And there were about 60 people, he said, who were all looking for spirituality. And so Swami should come and tell them about chanting and introduce them to spirituality. Prabhupada was very revolutionary. He was not conservative. A sannyasi with a, with a long traditional history of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the several other Vaishnava Acharyas. But wherever there is somebody looking for spirituality, Swamiji was ready to go. So one morning, on April 1st, 1967, Louis comes to Frederick Street Temple and he wants to take Swamiji with him to Morning Star Ranch and Prabhupada agrees to come. And a few more devotees jump into another car, a few other cars, and all of them head to Morning Star Ranch. And there, he, Louis, Lou takes Prabhupada around and then Prabhupada gets to see the ranch there. And then uh, some people are living under the tree, some people were living on in the, in the burrows, in the, in the holes of the tree, big holes. The trees have big girth and so there's a big hole, many of them living inside that. and. Uh, uh, that kind of, you know, crazy things, young you know, exploration and, and looking for new kind of living. These were the kind of young people and they were looking for spirituality. And so when Prabhupada reaches there by about one o'clock and then uh, Swamiji says that uh, I want to take, a, take rest for a while. So Louis takes him to his house, it's a wooden house. And then Prabhupada takes rest for a short while. And then uh, while they're walking to the house, Prabhupada sees some of the young, these people, some of them clothes, with clothes, and some of them without clothes. And they were working in the garden. And so one man, young, young man comes up, and then Louis, Louis introduces, this is Swami Bhakti Vedanta. And so that man comes and shakes hands with Prabhupada. And then, uh, then Prabhupada, Swamiji asks, what, do, what are you doing? And so he says, uh, I'm growing potatoes. No, no, what are you doing with your life? And uh, he didn't have any answer. And then Prabhupada kept walking. And then uh, after a little rest, 
and then Prabhupada comes, Louis takes him to another part of the ranch and these young hippies, they have created a seat for him and they got all the forest flowers and they decorated the seat for him. Very nice, isn't it? For a pure devotee to receive the pure devotee nicely, respectfully like that. So Prabhupada sat on that seat which was bedecked with wild forest flowers decorated, arranged by the hippies. And there Srila Prabhupada did Kirtan. The Kirtan goes on for about 45 minutes, one hour. And all the other devotees, they sing and chant and, and they dance. And it was, and then Prabhupada spoke for a short while. But it was long Kirtan and a very short talk. It was a very intense Kirtan for about 45 minutes or one hour. And, and at that time when Prabhupada was doing the Kirtan, they were all singing. Some of them were sitting, but many of them were singing and dancing with the devotees. Some of them were clothed and some of them were not. And the Kirtan went on and then he spoke for a short while. He didn't speak very long, but that Kirtan and that short talk and this visit of Srila Prabhupada created a very profound impact in that commune. They were all, many of them, were very, very sincere seekers. And that's how many devotees came out of that commune. And that Kirtan and that short talk by Srila Prabhupada made such an impact on the people around there. And by evening, Prabhupada was leaving. Just as he was about to leave, one of those who had heard Prabhupada's talk and the participated in the Kirtan, he wore dress and he also jumped into one of the cars to come back to the San Francisco temple. And after Prabhupada left, that one visit to Morning Star Ranch had such a profound impact. Chanting Hare Krishna became one of the practices in that ranch among them. Every day, every now and then, they would always gather together, sing and dance. And in fact, after Prabhupada's visit, many devotees joined from the ranch. They would all come and show up in the Frederick Street Temple in San Francisco. In fact, some of the devotees who came from that ranch later on became stalwart devotees and big leaders of ISKCON. Tamal Krishna, Vishnu Jana, Revati Nandana, Madhudvisha, Gaurahari, Devananda, and few more. Just that one visit of Swamiji to that ranch brought so many of them who were actually genuinely looking for spiritual life, not knowing where to go, what to do. And they all took to Krishna consciousness very seriously. And the devotees in San Francisco wanted Swamiji to be with them because their lives had transformed. It was revolving around Swamiji, doing different things that he wants them to do. But Swamiji was getting calls from the devotees in New York that he should come back. It was almost two and a half months since he came here. And on April 9th, the most dreaded day for the devotees of San Francisco, Swamiji decided to go to New York. So there was a car waiting for him. Swamiji came out of the apartment came to the temple hall and came out of the temple hall, was about to enter the car and the devotees were all crying. They were, if Swamiji goes away, what will happen to us? And then Prabhupada, Swamiji left, the, got into the car and he went to the airport. And at the airport, there was another group of devotees waiting to see him off and everybody was crying. And in just about two and a half months that Prabhupada came to San Francisco, he had opened up a temple, 
conducted many initiations, many weddings, installed the deities, gave them instruction to create, set up a ratha, and he said, I will come for the Rathayatra. Don't worry, I'm always, I'm always thinking of you, your welfare, and so I will come back. And, to, and these devotees, they were singing Kirtan and seeing him off, but they were all crying, feeling that intense. Just see how wonderful impression that Srila Prabhupada created and how he brought out devotion in the hearts of these people. And so Prabhupada was boarding the flight and now he would go to New York. And in New York, there was another mood among the devotees. They were ecstatic and joyful, waiting for Swamiji to come. So Swamiji left the small group of San Francisco devotees who were crying to join in a few hours. The small group of devotees in New York who were joyous and ecstatic to have him back.